What's up, guys? It is Fido from Self Taught Hustle back at it again. And today I will be doing round two of how to read code. Um, I did not intend to release this video, uh, the second video so soon, but I had so much fun uh, doing uh, the first video that I figured I, uh, I just I honestly, to some extent, I couldn't wait to, uh, to do this one. Um, but yeah, so uh, if you guys didn't watch the first video, I'll link it in the description box below. Um, you don't necessarily need to watch that one to get an idea of what's going on here, but uh, if you do want to go ahead and check that out. Um, um, okay, cool. So what we're looking at today is uh, Shopify's open source code. And we were looking at this uh, Sarama repo. Uh, Sarama is a Go library for Apache Kafka uh, in our uh, last uh, video. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. And what I did in the last video is that I started by looking at the readme file. And then uh, I came over here to, I think it was this one, this ACL create requests.go, right? So just to give you guys uh, a, a little bit of a background with my experience with Go, uh, it is none. <laughs> Aside from uh, yesterday's video, um, I, I have no experience in Go. Like I've never actually coded in Go, but uh, just based on, uh, so I would say a solid grasp in, in fundamentals that I have, I can pretty much get to understanding this code after reading it for some time, but it definitely is not, it does not come intuitively right away. It does anytime I'm looking at a new piece of code, especially one in, in a language that I've never worked in. Uh, it's going to take some time to understand. So uh, that's the process that you guys will be, uh, that you'll be witnessing today. And uh, we're just looking at one file. And so just to start it out here, we, we identified that there is a, uh, there's a struct here, which is a data structure that is uh, creating some form of, uh, it's, it's like a placeholder for a request that gets executed. Um, I don't actually know where the request is getting executed to, but I do know that this function here is uh, essentially its primary its primary purpose is to uh, handle the error of that request, right? So if that request fails, my get my best guess from our last video is that this is what's going to handle the error, uh, just based on this potential function name here, um, and then some of the logic that I uh, that I saw here. Um, some other things that I notice is that uh, whenever you see this uh, this uh, asterisk with uh, the data struct here, or an instance of the data struct, it seems uh, that this is just a shorthand version of this right here. So when you use it throughout the logic in your code, all you have to do is ref reference one letter instead of this whole create ACL request, which makes it just a little bit cleaner. So if um, so, let's let's actually let's let's take a look at this function here. So if we're looking at this function. Um, one of the things that I'm noticing is that we're accessing the struct here, right? And it looks like with a, 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 they have a, a Go has a dot operator, kind of like in JavaScript, and they're accessing the version. And right here, so we see that the version is a data type of an integer, right? So, uh, I, my guess is is an integer with 16 characters, and then the version, and then um, they ha so they're accessing that property in the struct and then they're setting it here in this function and it seems like they're passing it uh into the they're, they're passing this parameter into the function um okay cool so we're setting the version and then um let me see pd dot get array so pd um so pd is packet decoder so i'm not uh, let's here let's see what's packet decoder so define in real decoder dot go um Okay, well, let's get array length. I don't know if I want to sidetrack to go and take a look at packet decoder. Oh yeah, so packet decoder is an interface. So an interface is just kind of like a like a, um, a placeholder for saying, hey, look, this is an implementation that we're going to want to do later, right? This is just uh, this is just a reference to it, but it's not being implemented yet. And you implement an interface when you use it throughout your code, right? So right now it's an implementation. We're seeing an implementation of this interface here, this packet decoder. Um, let's go actually see. Let's let's go open up and see what it looks like. Yeah, so here is the interface, and it looks like um, it just, it's just a, a bunch of methods. A bunch of methods is what I'm seeing. And this, uh, it looks like they wrote some pretty good uh, notes here. So push decoder is the interface for decode. I wish, oh, here we go. Packet decoder is the interface for providing helpers for reading with Kafka's encoding rules. Types implementing decoder only need to worry about calling methods like get string, not about a string not about how a string is represented in Kafka. Yeah, so these are these are kind of like utility functions for uh, for encoding for some form of encoding that goes on uh, when we're um, 
it, throughout throughout this library, but in this particular case, when we're uh, executing this uh, request, um, encoding or decoding, I guess, it, because it's just by the name of uh, this packet decoder there. Okay, so the, really the reason why we, I, my guess is that the reason why they put in this packet decoder is simply to have access to this utility function here, get array length, so that we measure the length of uh, the given array, this uh, this n maybe, but I don't know what I don't know what that uh, is set to. Let me see if array is nil. Okay, so if error. Okay, and we're doing even some error handling here. And then ACL creations. ACL creation seems to be yep another. It's another. It's an array. It seems like that we want that we're storing in the struct. And in that ACL creations, what we're doing is that we're uh, we're calling a make function. ACL creations creation and then n. So I don't know to find online. 64 so this is this is down we went down okay there's a wrapper around resources in acl type yeah so this is another struct uh kind of strange we're still we're still in the same file it just it just jumped us down i didn't know that that could seem kind of confusing sometimes but um let me see here so we're here so then they set up a struct and then something with an array. So my guess is that they're making an array full of structs or one one single struct here. Um, and then they're just kind of smashing it together. Um, and the reason why I say that is because uh, ACL creations itself is defined as an array as well. And then that is further kind of proven here by the utilization of a for loop. I'll tell you, I mean, I'll tell you right now, this is like uh, for loops are pretty standard across, uh, you know, different... Um, as is much of this code, it's pretty standard across different languages. So although I've never seen a for loop in Go, I know how to use a for loop so, overall. So when I run into one in a different language, it um, makes it a little easier to comprehend. And if we remember this, if you guys remember this uh, column and then the equals there, it's, um, what is it doing? Oh yeah, it's like it's like using the var keyword in JavaScript. Um, okay, cool. So, we're, so we create, this is an array. And then what we're doing is that we're looping through the array and then we're instantiating a new instance of ACL creations. So for every loop in that array, so for every iteration in that array, we're creating a new instance of ACL creation, something like that. And then there, if error or else return nil, right? So all that's really happening here is we're creating an array with uh, and, and and looping through that array and then create and then adding a new instance of ACL creation per loop. Uh, oh, okay. And then N here is the length. I don't know. I'm not exactly certain where they're defining length. Oh, it looks like maybe it's here by the get array length. Is this is what it's going to be right here? And you and it's handling both the errors. So if there, if for whatever reason this packet decoder did not, uh, my guess is it did not load properly into this variable. It's going to log an error. Uh, but if it did, it's otherwise it's going to it's going to instantiate it's going to instantiate this error or it's going to instantiate this n. And the n ends up defining the amount of times that we loop through this array that's created here. So that I mean that's I, my guess is that that's pretty much what's happening. Um, contextually, so I don't know much more. So it's, we're creating a re much more than that. I know we're error handling here. We're uh, creating some form of a request. And then we're uh, then after that request, you know, generating some form of an ar array with it's this uh, inst these new instances of ACL creation as defined here. So I, I, I don't know. Actually, I don't know. I don't know. Um, and then funk create agent key version header version required version so it looks like these are just uh um you pass in no it's, yeah it looks like all these they're doing are just returning values yeah all they're doing is returning values from uh the existing struct right because uh create acl's request is this this puppy right here and we're we're setting we're setting some of those values in this um in this function here and then um this is a uh, this key version, header version, all this stuff is just uh, returning some of those values. And then ACL creation is wrapper around resource in ACL type, func ACL encode. Let me see. ACL encode, p packet encoder versions in 16. 
if resource if a dot resource so is that here no um acl creation if a dot resource dot encode pe version error is not nil return error acl encode resource acl so a what is a acl creation is this yeah so this is just an instance so this is just acl creation what you see right here is just this struct and then this they do that shorthand again right so acl creation dot resource dot encode so we're accessing this data value and then pe and then version error nil so yeah so all we're doing is uh I think we're unpacking the value that's stored here in this resource, which I'm not actually certain where that gets, uh, where that value gets set up, but we're in, it seems like we're doing some form of unpacking here and then version. Although it's getting passed here as well. Hmm. Decode. Yeah. And then there's, so encode and then decode. Yeah, so I, my guess is that what's happening here is we're, th these are just doing some evaluations for uh, how the how this struct was formed, how the values associated with this struct were formed. Yeah, so I mean, there's a couple things. I mean, I, I, I don't, I'm not certain that we can really even understand the totality of this file unless I, we get the context in which it's being used. And that's when we have to start looking at other files but um, especially because I don't see anything being called in this file. Um, these look like just a bunch of function definitions, but they don't, um, nothing's being called necessarily. So my guess is that we're probably looking at this file in and of itself, ACL create request is actually a utility file. It's not, it's not like a, it's, uh, it's not the code actually being, it, it's like a, it's an app. How do I say this? It's like away from the code that is getting executed to, uh, programmatically to, um, it, how do I say it? It's away from like the code, the main, the main code, right? It's, it, this is just like a, a utility. Like they, they just bring in functions as needed from this, from this file based on where the action is happening in the code. If that makes any sense. Yeah. That's, I, I feel like that's a good way. Um, or I sense that that's a good way of describing it. And, and what makes me think that is because if we were say like in a main method in Java or you just, uh, yeah, in a main method in Java, you'd, you, we would want to see some of this code being called and I'm just seeing a bunch of definitions and nothing being called. So my guess is this is ACL create requires start go is actually just a utility file, right? So let's go back to uh, the, uh, the repo now. And let me see here. Yeah. So I, it, it, yeah. So the, the rabbit hole is, is real for sure because look at how many different files there are ACL types. Um, let's do, Oh, we're at 13. Okay. Yeah. So, so we'll, we'll, we'll cut it there. We'll, we'll, we'll do more of these videos. Um, but I was going to say though, um, just to kind of wrap it up here, create ACL or create request. Where was I at right here? So we ended up, uh, after reading uh, this entire file, we defined that this is an error function. Um, this is an array. Uh, this, well, this ends up generating some form of an array based on the ACL creation that is executed or the request that's executed. And then these seem to just be, uh, all these do, all these functions do is return values based on the ACL requests, as you guys can see here. Um, and then this stuff down here is just encoding and decoding uh, some form of that uh, request uh, as it relates to the stuff up here. And because we ended up seeing that there was um, that there was no, none of these functions were being called in this particular file, we ended up realizing that this is a, this is a utility file. It's a utility file, so it's it's being used somewhere else in the code. Um, so. I don't know. I, I, contextually, that may be when, like, you're as a coder, you're using this library. You may pull from this file, right? I'm, I'm not actually sure that we'll see something like a me the equivalent of a main method in uh, this repo. Actually, now that I'm thinking of it, um, but very, very, uh, but, but there may be. I mean, we'll explore more. 
Um, but yeah, guys, so that, that's how you do it. Um, you, you know, you kind of take it, you, you take it bit by bit and you don't worry so much about, Hey, look, do I understand every line of this completely more? So just try to get a gist of what you're seeing as a whole by looking at things, you know, bit by bit, trying to break things down. I break them down in terms of functions. And then I try to get an assessment of, you know, after I understand this function, after I understand that function, I start to get a bigger idea of what I'm looking at as a whole, right? Without even knowing Go, just simply um, uh, evaluating what I'm seeing and from, uh, you know, a good understanding of fundamentals as well. But uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions or if you guys find this interesting, go ahead and leave a uh, comment in the section below. Other than that, I appreciate you guys and I will see you next time.